Have you ever felt strangely familiar with a place you've never been to? Or experienced a moment that seemed to repeat itself, down to every word and gesture? This eerie, almost mystical sensation is known as deja vu, a fleeting whisper from the mind that says, you've lived this before. But what if this isn't just a psychological glitch? What if deja vu reveals something deeper about the nature of time, memory, and consciousness itself? Across cultures and centuries, philosophers, mystics, and neuroscientists have all grappled with one question. Why do we sometimes feel like we're reliving the present moment? In today's video, we dive into the fascinating mystery of deja vu, exploring its possible neurological roots, psychological interpretations, and even the more esoteric theories that suggest our perception of time is far from linear. From memory loops to false recognition, and from spatial familiarity to the architecture of the subconscious, we'll uncover what science and philosophy have to say about this universal human experience. So, if you've ever asked yourself, why does this feel so familiar? You're not alone. Let's decode the déjà vu. The term déjà vu comes from French, meaning already seen. It describes that peculiar moment when the present feels like a memory, even though we logically know it cannot be. But what exactly is happening in the brain when we experience it? For centuries, déjà vu was brushed aside, seen either as a spiritual glitch a mystical echo from past lives, or dismissed as a quirk of an overactive imagination. But as modern neuroscience and cognitive psychology progressed, scientists began to take deja vu seriously. They discovered that this phenomenon is more common than we think. About two-thirds of people report experiencing deja vu at least once in their lives. And while the sensation usually lasts only a few seconds, it often leaves us with a haunting question. Have I been here before? Or is my brain just playing tricks on me? The phrase déjà vu was first coined in the late 19th century by Émile Boirac, a French philosopher and parapsychologist. Boirac wasn't just interested in the strange sensation itself. He believed it pointed to something beyond the limits of ordinary perception. In his book, The Future of Psychic Sciences, Boirac used the term déjà vu to describe that moment when the present feels eerily familiar, without any rational explanation. At the time, his views were controversial. He associated déjà vu with ideas like reincarnation, extrasensory perception, and psychic phenomena, which pushed the topic away from mainstream science for decades. Still, Boirac's contribution was crucial. By giving the experience a name, he created a shared language for something millions of people had experienced, but few had dared to explore. And thanks to him, what was once dismissed as superstition eventually became a subject of serious scientific inquiry. Most researchers now believe that déjà vu is a memory-based phenomenon, closely linked to the hippocampus, the brain's memory center. This region, particularly the dentate gyrus, acts like a filter, helping us recognize whether something is truly familiar or just feels familiar. Normally, when we encounter new information, our brain cross-checks it against stored memories. But sometimes, things get messy. A slight delay in neural processing or a misfire in our recognition circuits can cause the brain to mistakenly flag a new experience as familiar. It's a bit like opening a brand new email and having your mind whisper, you've read this before. No, you haven't. But your brain, briefly and convincingly, tells you otherwise. In recent years, one theory has gained significant traction that deja vu may be triggered by spatial similarity when the layout or design of a new environment resembles a scene stored in your memory, even if you can't consciously recall it. Imagine walking into a hospital you've never visited before. Suddenly, you feel like you know this place. The furniture arrangement, the corridor lighting, or even the angle of the reception desk might mirror another space you encountered years ago. Researchers tested this theory using virtual reality environments. Participants were shown digital spaces with identical layouts, but different textures and visuals. The result? People were far more likely to report deja vu when the spatial layout resembled something they had already seen, even if they couldn't remember seeing it. 
This suggests that déjà vu might not be about specific memories, but about familiar structures and unconscious pattern recognition. Strangely enough, déjà vu has a lesser-known counterpart. Jamais vu. Never seen. This is the sensation of encountering something you should recognize, yet it feels completely unfamiliar. Imagine reading a common word, like door, over and over until it suddenly looks strange and unfamiliar. That's jamais vu. While rare, this phenomenon offers a fascinating mirror to déjà vu and reminds us of just how fragile and reconstructive human memory really is. What if déjà vu isn't merely a memory error, but a crack in our perception of time? Some philosophers and theoretical physicists have speculated that our experience of time, past, present, and future, as a linear flow, may be nothing more than a cognitive illusion. In that case, déjà vu could represent a moment where the mind momentarily steps outside the timeline we believe to be fixed. According to this view, time is not strictly linear, but perhaps layered or cyclical. Déjà vu, then, becomes a glimpse, not into a past life, but into a parallel moment, a fold in time, or a loop in consciousness. Mystics and metaphysical thinkers have long held that all experiences exist simultaneously, and what we call now is merely where our attention happens to rest. Could déjà vu be evidence that we've briefly tapped into a version of reality just adjacent to our own? Or perhaps it's our mind brushing against the subconscious residue of a dream, a forgotten scene replayed through waking perception. After all, how do we know the difference between memory and imagination, when both are constructed by the same neural architecture? Throughout history, people have tried to explain déjà vu with ideas that go far beyond the boundaries of science. Reincarnation. The sense of familiarity comes from a past life experience resurfacing. Precognition. Déjà vu is not memory from the past, but a premonition from the future. Dream overlap. The scene you're experiencing might have occurred in a dream you've long forgotten, now being echoed in waking life. Simulated reality theory. Déjà vu is a coding error, a matrix glitch that hints at a programmed universe. While these theories are often unprovable, they remain popular because they address something science has yet to fully explain. Why does déjà vu feel so emotionally powerful, so deeply real, even when we know it shouldn't be? Our memory is not a perfect recording device. In fact, it's more like a creative editor, filling in missing pieces, shaping raw data into a coherent narrative. Sometimes, when parts of an experience are missing or incomplete, the unconscious mind steps in to fill the gap. It pulls fragments from other memories emotions, or patterns to construct something that feels right, even if it's not entirely accurate. This internal reconstruction can give rise to the sensation of déjà vu. Your brain isn't lying to you. It's storytelling. And just like any story, it might mix up chapters, merge two scenes, or repeat a familiar line without you noticing. In that moment of déjà vu, what you're experiencing may not be a literal memory, but rather a mental approximation built from bits and pieces your brain assembled to create a believable version of now. So, what does déjà vu really tell us? Whether déjà vu is a simple hiccup in memory, a misfire in the brain's pattern recognition, or a crack in the timeline of our consciousness, it remains one of the most intimate, uncanny, and universal experiences we share as humans. It reminds us that reality is not always as solid or linear as we assume. That the mind is a storyteller, constantly reconstructing the past, shaping the present, and anticipating the future, all at once. Maybe déjà vu doesn't show us that we've been here before. Maybe it shows us that memory, imagination, time, and perception are all deeply interconnected and far more mysterious than we think. So the next time you whisper, I've been here before, pause. Not to question the memory, but to marvel at the mind. Perhaps déjà vu is not about remembering the past, but about the mind's attempt to construct a present that feels whole. Maybe time does not flow as a straight line, but bends and loops through memory, and sometimes, at a strange intersection, 
the shadow of a past moment flickers across the now. What if deja vu isn't a glitch, but a quiet conversation between your conscious mind and the unconscious one? A moment when the curtain of reality flutters, and you find yourself suspended between what is and what has been. But what do you think deja vu really is? Is it a ghost from the past, a trick of the brain, or something else entirely? Let us know in the comments, and if this video made you pause and wonder, consider liking and subscribing for more mind-bending explorations.